This is Anthony Joshua, and this is how he used to fight. And Joshua just grins at him, and White is starting to come apart here already. White's got a hold. White's got a hold. He's got a hold. He's not doing it. This is how he fights today. To be fair, he ended 2023 looking more like the first guy than the second. But what exactly happened to the all-out, guns-blazing, seek-and-destroy knockout artist? Let's take a look. Simply put, he got better. Or to put it more accurately, he became more responsible. Always being in knockout mode is dangerous. Your defense slips, you risk emptying the tank, and you're so focused on offense, you might just forget about the punches coming back. If Joshua fights Ngannou the way he fought before, he's going to sleep. And at this stage in his career, one reckless mistake could be his last. Early on, it didn't really matter. AJ won his first championship off pure talent and athleticism. But as he stepped up, so did his opponents. He had to learn the hard way. And his first teacher? Vladimir Klitschko. Joshua came out like a wrecking ball against old man Vlad, overwhelming the former champ and scoring the first knockdown. But to power his early aggression, he used all of his energy. The veteran got back up and in the same round, found a home for his punches on a tired, stationary AJ. Joshua was breathing heavy and Klitschko was beginning to land at will. AJ may have won the round, but the seasoned vet was looking like the stronger fighter. Even after the break, Joshua was still gassed, but after scoring the knockdown, he could take the round off and stick and move until he caught his breath. That is, until... You're not landing that one again. But here he comes. You don't get to be the reigning heavyweight champ for 12 years without a few tricks up your sleeve. Dr. Steelhammer's explosive straight right sent AJ to the canvas for the first time in his career. And with one knockdown apiece, this fight just got interesting. But either due to old age or perhaps not wanting to chase the knockout, Vladimir took his foot off the gas. And with youth on his side, Joshua caught a second wind and landed an uppercut from the gods right on Klitschko's chin. To this day, I don't know how Vlad stayed standing. Joshua wouldn't let his opportunity slip a second time and battered the former champ to the canvas en route to an 11th round stoppage. AJ was now a two belt champion and added a legend to his resume. And after being battle tested in 2017's fight of the year, he proved he was the real deal. But the taste of Vlad's best punch would prove to leave a lasting impression. AJ was a little more reserved after going to a 12 round decision for the first time in his career. But it didn't matter, he was now a 3 belt champion and still collecting knockouts. Everything was lining up perfectly for his US debut. He toured New York, promoted his fight on late night, and even had a lower ranked opponent step in as a last minute replacement. A knockout in Madison Square Garden would send his career to the moon. And in the third round, that moonshot was well on its way. A three-punch combo on the inside snapped the neck of Andy Ruiz and sent him tumbling. Everyone knew what was coming next. AJ enters beast mode and puts the man to sleep. Even the commentators said, Anthony Joshua is a composed and ferocious finisher. Watch this. Enter AJ's second great lesson. With the knockout on his mind, Joshua stepped back into the fire. What no one expected, however, was the short, fat underdog to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the champ. Andy's fast hands clipped the Brit right on the temple, and he was never the same. AJ lost his legs, his equilibrium, and the will to engage. Three more trips to the canvas, and it was called off. The upset of a generation. The embarrassment of a generation. The Klitschko fight was rough, but he did get up and win with a knockout. This fight was not just a loss, but one he was winning and blew against the underdog. Absolute nightmare. Something had to change, and it did. In the rematch, we saw the most poised and disciplined Joshua yet. Perhaps not as exciting as before, but he got it done. The new and improved AJ also flatlined Kubrat Pulev, and it looked like his second reign as champion was gonna be a long and prosperous one. Then came the Ukrainian master. Oleksandr Usyk, in front of 68,000 of AJ's friends and family, put on the performance of a lifetime. 
Despite being vastly undersized, his footwork, pace, and pressure were too much for the champ to handle. Feints and jabs set up his terrifyingly accurate cross, and his elite defense kept him safe. He ended the fight on the front foot, and Joshua barely made it out of the round. Usyk proved that skill and speed still matter in the heavyweight division, and beat the champ in his own backyard. And a year later, he did it again. Anthony Joshua had been humbled for the third time, and every time, critics called it the end of his career. However, if we've learned anything from AJ, it's that he lives in the gym, takes his L's with grace, and always comes back better. Of all the elite heavyweights, he is the best athlete, and seems to be the only one that still has his heart in it, evidenced by the fact that he dedicated 2023 to sharpening his skills and clawing his way back to a title shot. For the first time since he was a challenger, he fought an aggressive three times in one year. A routing against Jermaine Franklin, a savage knockout over Robert Hellenius, and a systematic breakdown of Otto Wallin. Were they as exciting as his prospect days? Maybe not, but an exciting, barbaric, heat-seeking missile isn't what he needs to be right now. He needs to be a champion, and champions are economical, smart, and disciplined with measured aggression. That's the AJ we saw this past year. The thing is, those guys he beat weren't exactly championship material. Challengers maybe, but nothing compared to Joshua's next fight, Francis Ngannou. Now, I'm not saying Ngannou is some elite boxer, but he did do this to Fury. He's got a great chin and lights out power, and a lot of people think he's gonna retire AJ with a knockout. Based on the Fury fight, I don't blame him. But here's what they don't understand about Ngannou's boxing debut. Fury fights to the level of his opponents. He overlooked the MMA fighter and thought he had an easy payday. But now that there's footage for Joshua to study, he'll have a game plan whereas Fury fought off instinct alone. Joshua should look to box from the outside, throw a million jabs, and stay out of a firefight. The AJ we saw in the Ruiz rematch with the cautious offense we saw last year might be his strongest form yet. One thing is certain, Joshua is a smarter fighter today than he was 5 years ago. Less aggressive maybe, but like all great champions, he's learning from his losses and honing his craft. I think we're gonna see a smart composed fight from the two-time champ, but who knows, it's heavyweight boxing. Let me know in the comments section who you think is gonna win. Joshua vs Ngannou will be a battle of titans, but it wasn't so long ago when a 5'10 Mike Tyson was king of the division. Check out this video to see just how much the heavyweight landscape has grown.